You're watching From the Soapbox to the Stage, and I'm your host, Bill Corbett. It's been said that you will spend the majority of your time marketing yourself and your speaking business. My guest is a marketing expert and has some specific tips on how to make that happen. April Heavens Woodcock is the managing partner and buzz coordinator of Touching Clients, a marketing consulting firm that specializes in online branding. She works with small to medium-sized companies to implement strategic marketing strategies to help their business grow from the inside out. April is an authorized local expert of Constant Contact who presents regularly on email marketing and social media throughout the New England area. Welcome back to the show, April. Thank you. Thanks for having Glad me. Glad that you're here. Okay, so what I like to do now is, for those who are watching the show, I want to uh, offer them tips. Okay. Offer them tips about what you've discovered along the way in the business of speaking. And what, what would you suggest to people who are like, thinking about being a speaker I'm thinking about working my way up to the stage I'm working I'm, I'm working on the ideas of being a trainer or a presenter what kind of tips would you like to offer especially if it's in marketing because the whole thing is you know what you can have a great idea you can have a great stage presence but if you're not doing any marketing you're not going anywhere so if, if you would have any marketing suggestions since that's your expertise okay all right uh, marketing a speaking business what would you what would you say to somebody if somebody wanted you to be their mentor what would you recommend I would first recommend that you look for opportunities within your own organizations that you might be close to so for example if I started with the local chamber and offered some uh, offered some classes some trainings opportunities to get comfortable get my feet wet because what happens is within the chamber they help you market so they're putting your word your business out there your name so they're helping you to market I think one of the biggest things is that you really need to take the time and images image is really important so when you put up your website have a professional photo have those things that build your credibility as a speaker so there's there's it's not just hey I know this topic and I want to talk about it you have to be confident be passionate about the topic too I think that comes through but really have a presence whether it's on your social media your your uh, website that when people look at you they know oh I want I want to hire this person you know that's so important because what I found if I'm looking for a person to work with to hire sure and if I go to their profile I don't see a face right I, maybe it's me and you can you can respond to this but if they haven't taken the time to put up their headshot right. I need to see a headshot or the worst is you see an avatar a blank right. headshot I you know what I, I there's just something that we're we're human beings we right. need to see what each other looks right. like and I think it's a standard professional thing to invest in a and it doesn't even cost that no, much it I mean it, you, you could get a photographer to do it for about 200 bucks uh, there's even places they'll do it for 50 bucks right. especially if they're looking for some publicity right. or you can barter right but you got to get your head shot up there I have to wonder when I when I stumble on someone's profile on LinkedIn or whatever and there's no headshot I go Right. <laughs> How are they expecting to do any business? What What are your thoughts on that? Uh, I completely agree. The other thing too with a headshot, I think sometimes people think headshots have to be stuffy. You always have to be in a business suit, and I actually think it. Uh, professional headshots, you can really represent your personality well in it. You know, I think that. Uh, you can dictate what your professional photo looks like because you want people to be drawn into you because you're the one um, that they're going to learn from. You're the one that's going to be in their presence. So I never want my photo to be uh, I'm standing behind a blue wall and stuffy. Um, so that being said with professional photos, within LinkedIn, first impressions are lasting always. And I think that you are looking to make connections and build connections and whether or not if you have a great image on your LinkedIn profile on your website and they're looking at multiple people that may be in the same uh, expertise as you that are looking for a speaker, I guarantee that the people with the most filled out, most professional, um, most inviting profiles are going to get looked at before the ones that don't, especially with no image. I wouldn't even put myself out there if I couldn't put an image in my LinkedIn profile. You know, that is so important because, uh, and I've got an example of that, I was looking for someone for some work and I went out and I found her profile and the photo, she did have a photo, right. but I could tell she cut it out of a group picture. Oh, somebody no. was next to her and I could see the cheek of somebody uh, else. It was one of those, right. and I'm going like, 
that's that's just not professional. And what did I do? I went looking for somebody right. else, and I and I ended up uh, contacting the second person. Right. And I think she lost the opportunity. Well, and uh, I think you do, and I think that um, it is an opportunity. Again, first impressions are lasting. Selfies, forget about it. You know, you really need to make that impression. I used to in my trainings. Um, my husband used to have the 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 bad photo of behind the stand in front of a wall, and and I would use that as an example against other ones well he's since changed it he's learned something <laughs> but um, you know it really makes a big difference when you look when you actually start to think about it and look at it so first impressions are lasting. you know my first headshot that I had taken I paid fifty dollars for and it was a photographer that was set up in a mall and I was doing some shopping looking for a gift and I stopped in and I go it's a photo studio she goes uh-huh I said do you do headshots she goes yep we have fifty dollars <laughs> special while, while it lasts fifty and I go fifty dollars for a headshot <laughs> And I was said, was it a fifty dollars special? Yeah, it was. It was <laughs> worth the risk for fifty bucks. It was one of the best shots I had taken. Really, that's great. It was. Great. It was one of those. Um, I think they really kind of catered to families and kids, okay. portraits kind of thing. Sure. But they would do that. You could get creative about finding a way to get rid of that that dark or shifty uh, right. photo you have for that. Right. Um, you know, uh, I wrote my book uh, from the soapbox to the stage, and I talked about the importance of putting yourself out there as a professional uh, really making sure you know you got to play the game you mm -hmm. got it and and because like you said the first impressions are lasting impressions so whether it's your website or your business card or your headshot you gotta do what you can to build that part of your budget so you have that money to spend right. because that's like one of the biggest features you putting yourself out there on social media right I would, yeah, I would uh, absolutely, and I think that the other thing too is when you're putting yourself out there on social media, if you have a, if you decide that you're going to use a Facebook business page, and that's you're going to be your brand on your Facebook business page, maybe that's. Um, always have your professional photo in your profile and then I would encourage you to use pictures of you speaking use uh, real life images to tell your story so people can say hey oh they've spoke to this they've they've done um, speaking engagements to this kind of group this kind of group because I think it humanizes who we are because sometimes when you're people are looking on the internet it's too um, cold sometimes and I think we're in definitely in a marketplace where you need to be who you are and show that on every channel that you're at whether you have a video whether it's on your social media channel but show that celebrate it it's really an opportunity to celebrate and show your confidence in what you what you're doing out there because I think it sends a great message to your audience and I it provides huge value and I think you're right because it would be so easy to find someone with a camera Right. to come out we've got family members who have cameras right. you can enlist someone's help at the conference or the meeting you're at you know it, it, they're not all going to come out great no. don't worry about that just and you may not use them all the point is get into the habit of enlisting someone to take pictures while you're out bring your camera right and you know if you've got a product say look I'll give you a free CD or right. something right. if you take this camera and take as many shots as you can to kill the battery even if you you know and just to have a, social media is about having a little bit of fun and being personable so even if you don't have that opportunity to pull somebody in I always take a picture wherever I am in terms of if I'm getting ready to go on stage or getting ready to go give a training I'll take a picture from the back of the room like hey we're gonna be talking about this and get excited I do a check-in so people can see what I'm doing in real time and that's so if you don't have that you still can do it yourself you can also do the infamous selfie image of your phone behind the audience and um, and that's the thing within social media it can be a little bit of fun it doesn't have to be perfect because it, it makes you human we're not perfect so that uh, that really sends that message and I get I trip over that on a regular basis because I'm a perfectionist I want everything to be just just ask my crew no don't ask them right. I, I, I need every I need everything to be just right and I think when I go to business events I'm afraid of taking the informal shot going oh it's not gonna be just right, right. But, and I have to remind myself in with the good air, out with the bad, relax, right. and have some fun with it, like you say. We only got a minute left, but okay. last uh, last point that you want to make or a, or a tip you want to make? What about email, real quick? Mm -hmm. What about email? I, we could spend hours talking about we email, could, but do you have one email marketing tip? You know, I think 
It, this is email and everything within marketing. Um, as you're building your business and your rapport, consistency is going to be key to your success. So um, email is a great tool to follow up to stay top of mind awareness because it's permission-based email marketing. So if you go and you're trying to sell your book or product at an event, collect email addresses. Email, I, I could wave a magic wand and social media could go away tomorrow. If I have 2,000 fans, guess what? I don't have 2,000 email addresses. So email addresses are really a, a valuable source and people underestimate that in business and they underestimate the value of those that's a point of contact for your audience. So. Good point, good point. Listen, thank you so much for Thanks coming for out having me. and this is giving great. us a snapshot view into what you do and the tips that are going to be very helpful for our viewers. Great, thank you. Appreciate that. Marketing, a speaking business is the process of communicating the value of what you do to your customers. Now, it is a critical business function for attracting customers, and if you don't take the time to learn how to do it effectively, you may never get your speaking business off the ground. Now, I hope you'll join me for future episodes of this show as I set out to tap into the knowledge of professional speakers who are willing to share their secrets for success on the stage. As Dale Carnegie once said, make the most of today, Get interested in something, shake yourself awake, and let the winds of enthusiasm sweep through you with gusto. I'm Bill Corbett, and I'll see you the next time on From the Soapbox to the Stage.